Dear learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Ekta, PGT Chemistry. Today we are going to discuss about lesson 23, Nomenclature and General Principles. You will be able to understand at the end of this unit the importance of organic chemistry in our daily life. You will be able to understand the word hydrocarbon and to classify hydrocarbon. So, let us see how organic chemistry help us in our daily life. It is found in fuels, plastics, paints, dyes, drugs and medicines, polymers, cloth, explosive, pesticides, etc. So this picture is very clear which will tell you the application of organic chemistry in our daily life. Let us learn about what is hydrocarbon. First of all, we should know what is the major component of organic chemistry which is carbon. Why is it so? Because Carbon shows versatile nature. Carbon has the property of catenation that is self-linking property with itself and with other atoms like hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, etc. Compounds of carbon and hydrogen are called as hydrocarbons. One more important property of carbon is tetravalency of carbon. A carbon atom has four electrons in its outermost valence shell. Let us see, carbon has atomic number 6. So, when we write the electronic configuration, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So, these are the valence electrons, four valence electron in carbon. Now, carbon needs four more electrons to complete its octet. Either it will take four more electrons or it can give four electrons to satisfy its octate or duplate. But carbon does not do any of this. Why? Because it is very difficult for all the four electrons. It is very difficult for carbon to lose all the four electrons because it requires higher energy. On other hand, if it accepts four electron, then it becomes very difficult for the nucleus of carbon atom to hold all the 10 electrons together. Therefore, as a result, carbon atom form four covalent bonds by sharing valence electron with other atom. This is known as tetravalency of carbon. Tetra means four. These four valency of carbon are directed towards four corners of a regular tetrahedron inclined to each other at an atomic angle of 109 degree 28 minutes. So this is the structure which you can see and here is the model which shows you that in the center you have a carbon, the black ball is carbon and here you find the four hydrogen atoms. So it looked like a regular tetrahedron with an angle of 109 degree 28 minutes. Let us see how you can represent the organic compound structural representation of organic compounds which could be in the complete condensed and bond line structures from your previous knowledge you know that lewis dot structure is the simplest way to represent certain atom or the molecule but if you represent in this form that is c2h6 c2h4 this is the condensed formula you can also write the structure of organic molecule as CH3, CH3, CH2, double bond, CH2. All these are the ways of representing the structures of organic molecules. Another form is a bond line form where you represent the molecule in a zigzag manner. When you represent the molecule in a zigzag manner, that means there is no atoms, you are not showing any of the atoms. It is just the lines. So, here you find that the terminal positions are occupied by always CH3 and the peaks are occupied by the carbon. From these structures, you can identify the name of the compound, you can write the name of the compound. For example, you have 3 methyl octane which can be represented in various forms CH3, CH2, CH. On CH there is one methyl group and then there are eight carbon atoms in a straight chain. So this is one of the way to represent a molecule of 3 methyl octane. Next the B you can observe that and the C part 
is a bond line formula in which the terminal positions are occupied by CH3 group and the peaks are having carbon compounds. Next, in cyclic compounds, you can see they have only bond line is cyclopropane, cyclohexane, cyclopentane, chlorocyclohexane, etc. So there are only represented by lines. If you open those lines, you can see that carbon are at the peaks and rest of the valencies are satisfied by hydrogen. Now let us classify organic compounds. Organic compounds can be classified into acyclic or open chain compounds and cyclic or closed chain or ring compounds. Cyclic or closed chain compounds can be further classified into homocyclic or carbocyclic compounds and heterocyclic compounds. Homocyclic compounds can further be classified into alicyclic compounds and aromatic compounds and aromatic compounds can be further classified into benzenoid compounds and non-benzenoid compounds. Acyclic or open chain compounds can be saturated or unsaturated. They are also called as aliphatic compounds. They consist of straight or branch chain compounds. For example, you have ethane, which previously also I showed it on the board, isobutane in which there is one branch, acetaldehyde, acetic acid, all these molecules are in a straight or a branch chain, not having any cycle in it. Aromatic compound is a special type of compounds which include benzene and its derivatives. Let us see those molecules. Benzene on in the side chain has NH2 group, which we call it as an aniline. Two benzene ring fused together, naphthalene. Non-benzenoid compound, you'll observe it is tropolone. When you see heterocyclic aromatic compounds, there is another atom inculcated in the ring in spite of carbon like oxygen, furan, thiophene, you have sulfur in it and pyridine, you have nitrogen in it. Alicyclic or closed chain or ring compounds contain carbon atoms which are joined in the form of the ring which I explained to you previously also and other than carbon are also present in the ring which we call it as a heterocyclic. So these are few examples you can observe cyclopropanes, cyclohexane, cyclohexene having a double bond in a compound, tetrahydrofuran, etc. So let us summarize what we have learned so far. Hydrocarbons are the compounds of carbon containing hydrogen and carbon. Further, they are classified into, you can see from the table. Thank you.